In this video we're going to be looking at Bernoulli's equation and we're going to be looking at Bernoulli's equation in the context of an example and that example is this tank that we've drawn here. So what we've got is a tank with a water level of 5 metres and there's a pipe coming out the base of that tank with water flowing out of the pipe. What we're going to do is try to derive Bernoulli's equation for this example and then use Bernoulli's equation to work out what the velocity and what the flow rate are coming out of this pipe that's got a diameter of 0.1 meters. So in previous videos where we were looking at continuity, what we were saying is that discharge is velocity times area. So in the previous examples, this was easy because we were given two of these three terms, so there's only there was only one unknown. In this example, we've been given the area of the pipe. So we've got the diameter which gives us the area, but we haven't got the discharge or the velocity. So we're actually going to physically have to work out uh, how this five metres of, of water is giving us a certain velocity, which is then going to give us a certain flow. So what I'm not going to do in this video is mathematically derive Bernoulli's equation, but we can actually derive it just by thinking about what is physically going on in this system. So if we think about a particle of water at the base of this system, let's say that the valve is shut on this pipe. When we open the valve, this particle of water is going to accelerate and move down this pipe at a certain velocity. So what we can think about is what is giving this particle of water the energy to move down that pipe? And actually the only thing giving this particle of water any energy is this five meters of water above it. So the only thing that's gonna give this particle of water energy to move down the pipe is the pressure coming from the five meters of water above it. So the energy in this particle to move is gonna be pressure, which is rho gh. So from our videos looking at hydrostatics, we should know that hydrostatic pressure is density of water times gravity times the height of water above a particle. And what we're going to do is think about Bernoulli's equation where the terms are in units of metres. So we want to think about everything in terms of this five metres of, of water. So we can rework the units of pressure here so that we're getting it in a height. So pressure is rho gh. So pressure in units of height is going to be pressure over density times gravity. And what we can see is at this point in the system, this particle of water has the equivalent of five meters of pressure. So actually, if we think about the principles of conservation of energy, what we know is that everywhere in this system, energy levels should be the same. So we can think about a particle of water right at the top of this tank so in theory, that particle of water should have the same energy as the particles of water at the bottom of the tank. So if we took a pipe from the top down to the bottom, by the time the water left this pipe, it should be going at the same speed as the water from the pipe at the bottom. So what energy does this particle of water at the top of the tank have? So it, this particle of water actually is going to have no pressure because there's no water above it, but it will have a pressure... Uh, energy due to elevation. So this particle of water has five meters of elevation. So the particle at the bottom of the system has five meters of pressure, which will accelerate it down the pipe. The particle at the top of the tank has five meters of elevation, which will accelerate it down the pipe. And finally, we can think about what happens if we took a pipe out of the middle of this system. So we've got a particle in the middle of this system so now what we've got is a particle that has a combination of pressure and elevation. So this particle is going to have 2.5 metres of pressure and then 2.5 metres of elevation. So the energy inside this particle is going to be elevation plus pressure. So. Anywhere inside this tank, what we can say is that the total energy H, or total pressure head, is going to be the elevation of a particle 
plus the pressure of that particle. The final thing that we can think about is uh, the final way in which particles can be energised is that actually as they start to move down these pipes, so it, if this particle starts to accelerate down this pipe, there's actually going to be a third form of energy and that's going to be kinetic energy. So as this particle accelerates down the pipe, some of that elevation and pressure energy is going to be transformed into kinetic energy. So we need a final term which is kinetic energy in the units of meters. So what we've done here is derive Bernoulli's equation. And what this equation tells us is any particle anywhere in this system, the total energy of that particle is going to be the sum of its elevation, its pressure, and its velocity giving us the kinetic energy. What we can also say if we assume continuity of energy, sorry, if we assume conservation of energies, we can say that at one point in the tank, the sum of all of these energies should be equal to another location in the tank. So the energy is the same everywhere in the tank and it's the sum of elevation plus pressure plus uh, velocity. So between any two points in this tank, the elevation, the pressure or the velocity could be different, but the sum of all of those three is going to be the same at any two given points in the tank. So what we can do now is we can take this equation and apply it to this system to work out our velocity in the pipe and our flow rate. So we've got our tank, we've got five metres of water there's a flow of water coming out the end of that tank and what we know is that between two points elevation plus pressure plus our velocity head equals elevation plus pressure plus our velocity head at another point in the tank. So what we can do is use this equation to try to work out what the velocity is in the pipe. So to do that we need to apply this equation between two points in the system. So the second point we're going to say is the end of this pipe. So this is point number two. So point number two is going to be these terms here. And then we need to find another point, point number one, for the first half of the equation. So at the moment, what we're trying to find is this velocity u2. So this is the velocity of water in the pipe. The problem we've got is that there are five other unknowns in this equation, so we can't solve it as it currently is. But what we can do is set up this problem between two points in the pipe where we can cancel out enough terms so that the only unknown is our velocity. So what we can do is if we take the first point as the water surface in this tank, so th the first half of the equation is the water surface. This now allows us to actually be able to solve this equation because at the water surface we know what the elevation is, so the elevation is 5 meters. The pressure, we're not given the pressure, but by just looking at this, at the example we can see that the pressure is going to be zero because there's no water above this particle so it's not under any, any pressure, so the pressure term is going to go to zero. We can also actually assume that the velocity term at the surface of the water is negligible, negligible to the point that we can call it zero. Because if you think about a large tank of water with a pipe coming out the bottom of it, the speed of the surface of that water is going to be negligible compared to the speed of the water in this pipe. So our kinetic energy term can go to zero here. So what we're saying is at the water surface all of the energy that this particle of water has is potential energy. So all of the sum of all of the energies is five meters of potential en energy. 
I can do the same thing at the outlet of the pipe. So at this point, we're trying to find the velocity. The elevation is now zero because we're at, right at the bottom of the system, so there's no potential energy at the bottom of this pipe. And also pressure is also going to be zero because as the water leaves this pipe, it's no longer under pressure. It's, it's at atmospheric pressure, so there's no water above it anymore. So our pressure term is going to go to zero. So what we can see is that between point number one and point number two, we end up with a much more simple version of this equation where at point number one all of the energy is in potential energy in terms of elevation at point number two all of the energy is in kinetic energy in terms of velocity so we can just solve this equation for u2 which will be square roots of z1 2g so our velocity coming out of that tank is going to be 5 times 2 times 9.81 which is 9.9 .9 meters per second and then finally if we want to work out the flow now that we have the velocity we can work out the flow using our continuity equation so u q equals ua We've now got U, which is 9.9 .9 meters per second. We're not given the area, but we're given the diameter of the pipe. So we think that the area of the pipe is gonna be pi r squared. So diameter divided by two gives us r, pi r squared. And that gives us a final flow from this example of 7.78 times 10 to the minus four meters cubed per second. So in this video what we've done is looked at where Bernoulli's equation comes from and by assuming conservation of energy we've applied it between two points in a system to give us the velocity of water in a pipe from uh, a head of water behind the pipe.